Had I known that these tools on Clip Studio Paint had existed when I first started using the program, my progress would have been so much faster. Not like I would have had an extreme transformation in my artwork or something, but it would have made my process so much faster to where I would have actually been able to focus on the things that really mattered. You know, like actually improving my art. Yeah. My name is Dreamer, by the way, and I will be showing you all this list of tools that you can use to make your process a little bit faster when using Clip Studio Paint. Doesn't matter if you're a beginner or even advanced. I really think that these tools, if you don't already know that they exist, could really help you make your process faster. So without further ado, let's get started. Apologies in advance if I talk really, really fast. A magic tool. Well, the auto tool, as Clip Studio Paint calls it. When it's used, especially in tandem with the lasso fill tool, which is also really, really it makes my art process so fast. It's located right beside the lasso tool at the top section of the sidebar next to your canvas. This and the lasso fill tool are my favorite things to use when it comes to coloring art. If you have not tried these two tools, I highly recommend using them. The symmetry tool. Admittedly, I don't use this too much in my art because I can make some pretty uncanny looking things with it if I'm not careful. But when it comes in handy, it makes things so much quicker. And I don't have to worry about making sure things are even equal to each other and proportionately correct. It does the work for me. This is great for stuff like clip art or chibi faces. So cute. For anything that requires, well, symmetry. It's a lifesaver. If you want to find it, just go under the ruler palette that's on the sidebar of your canvas and it's in the list of rulers that are in the subtool palette. Then you just put your line wherever you want it to be on the canvas, switch to your brush, and start drawing. Press and hold shift for a straight line, by the way. Now then, since we talked about the magic tool a few seconds ago, I figured it might be best if I mentioned its partner in crime, the lasso fill tool. It's a bit trickier to find. It's under the shapes palette and the sidebar next to the canvas. Once you press the shape that's there, the subtool palette opens up and you'll find it amongst the list of shapes that you can draw. It's way more efficient than a lasso tool when it comes to base colors because it automatically puts the color in when you're done tracing the shape of what you want to be filled or what shape you want to be drawn. It's a bit hard to control at times, but when you get the hang of it, it is so quick and easy to apply color to your art. I love using the lasso fill tool to apply base colors to my illustrations. I highly recommend using it. A border tool. It is so handy to use when you want a quick line art for something, especially if it's for something with straight lines. There are two types of edges that you can use, the regular edge and the watercolor edge. I tend to use the regular edge for things that require a distinguishable difference between the color that I've applied and the border of the color shape, like stickers. And as for the watercolor edge, I tend to use it for stuff with straight edges, like doors or frames. And if you work that way, you could also outline your characters with it. But do not underestimate this tool like I did. It speeds up the lining process for some things. Try it out and see how you like it. The Navigator Window. I was always looking at artists doing their time lapses and speed paints on YouTube, and I was always wondering, how do they get the little window at the side that lets them see the whole piece? I wanna have that. I was always having to zoom in to add in my details, and I'd get so absorbed in them, and I would never be able to see how it looked as a whole. So sometimes I'd finish adding details, and then when I'd zoom out, it looks terrible. Dear Vault. Granted, I do still zoom in a lot, but now I can see how well or how badly the details I'm adding are affecting the piece as a whole. And I hope that I would never get so absorbed in details so small that nobody would notice them. Simplify shape, streamer. Simplify shape! Textures and material. Isn't it great when you're working in Clip Studio Paint and you realize you don't know how to draw backgrounds or the specific texture you're looking for, but then you realize you can just either hop onto the asset store to buy what you're looking for or go to the default texture brushes and make it like that? so convenient i love it now then if you're new to clip studio paint you may be wondering what on earth is the asset store the asset store is this amazing shop of sorts where you can buy brushes either made by other artists or by clip studio paint themselves whether you're looking for backgrounds for a web comic textures to use in your illustrations or new brushes to experiment with the asset store has them for you there are a plethora of free brushes and materials you can get but if you want to go the extra mile and seem kind of fancy and buy some, that's open for you to do too. The two currencies are gold and clippy, and once you have enough of either or, you can buy the brushes and materials that you've been eyeing. As far as I've observed, gold is usually for materials, and clippy is usually for brushes. And they apparently have a gold membership where you can trade in your gold for clippy. So there's that too. But I highly recommend checking out the asset store if you haven't already. Just don't get carried away like I did and download thousands of brushes. <laughs> This video is not sponsored, by the way. Pressure sensitivity. It is so much more efficient than having to adjust the opacity of layers or brushes to get things more cohesive. To get your stylus or drawing tablet to register Clip Studio Paint to the pressure sensitivity you want, you just have to open up the pen pressure settings palette and then draw as lightly and as darkly as you desire for it to register that as the extent of how light and how dark you want to draw your lines and color. Then you just save it and it should be registered. Again, if I had known this when I was first starting out, it would have been a far better experience with my digital art process. Or at least it would have been faster in terms of color. 
But if you don't use pressure sensitivity in your artwork, please disregard this tip and I am sorry for wasting your time. Color history! I used to fumble around the color wheel trying to get things the exact same shade and hue as they were the last time I had applied the color when I could have used this thing all along. I. If you can't see the color history palette, just go to the window tab at the top of Clip Studio Paint and it'll be amongst the list of tabs and palettes that you can open up to be viewed when you open up the canvas. This and color picking. Alpha Lock Ink. I cannot tell you how many clip layers I had over my base color layer when I was first starting out because I didn't know the Alpha Lock layer existed. I used to use the layers for things like clothing and accessories, but when it comes to applying shade to skin and clothing after I've applied the base colors, hands down, Alpha Lock is so much more efficient than clipping layers. To be fair though, if you're gonna use a blending mode, you're gonna have to clip a layer to the base color. Sorry, I don't make the rules. This little button right here, it makes the brush you're using an eraser. I. Enough said. Seriously though, if you're wanting to have some control to what you're erasing and still maintain the texture of the brush you're using, I highly recommend using this. I love to use it when I've put a multiply layer over base colors. I can use it to erase the shape and form of whatever it is I'm going to render later on. It's awesome. Shading Assist. I don't really use this tool anymore, but if I had known about it when I was a beginner, like my first few drawings in digital art, period, this would have been my favorite tool hands down. If you want to activate the Shading Assist tool, simply go to the Edit tab at the top of Clip Studio Paint. Then go down to Shading Assist. It's located right underneath Colorize. On the menu that pops up after doing so, you can select default light settings like the time of day, or you can pick the shadow and light colors that you want. You can also move around the ball to situate where you want the light source to come from. Personally, I just use it as a reference to figure out where my shadows should go on my actual illustration. I only used it once for an actual art piece. But it was really cool using it to figure out where I should place shadows in my illustration, especially since I was an absolute beginner with knowing how to apply them in the first place. I highly recommend trying it if you struggle with shadow and light placement. It's pretty handy. And this last one isn't necessarily a game-changing shortcut. But basically, if you just have a layer that you want to duplicate, rather than having to right-click it and then go down and press duplicate layer, you can also press Control c to copy it and then Control v to paste it, and BAM! It's copied. You're, you're, you're gonna have to move it to see it, but, but it's there. You can also do this across drawings. Just press Control c on the layer that you want on a different illustration, then go to the new file and press Control v and BAM! It's so cool. And just like that, we've gone through all the handy tools I wish I had known when I was first starting out with Clip Studio Paint and digital art in general. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And don't forget to give credit to all the artists that you've studied and observed over the years. Shout out to all the ones that I've studied and learned from. I wish you all the best and happy creating.